This is Karen Ranzi, and I'm here at the Raw Living Expo out in California. And I'm so thrilled that my friend Dr. Rick Dina is here. I've known Rick for many, many years, I think since around 1999. That sounds about right, yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And I have had many opportunities to hear Dr. Dina and his wife, Dr. Karen Dina. Um, talking about the raw food diet and nutrition in the raw food diet. The last time I hosted them was in October of 2013 um, on their topic, Overcoming Nutrient Concerns on a Raw Vegan Diet. Absolutely excellent information that we all need to hear, both parents and educators. We need to know this information so that we can be secure about the raw vegan diet being scientifically and nutritionally sound. And so um, I'm going to talk Dr. to Dr. Dina today about omega-3s, which I know a lot of parents are really concerned about because they want to make sure that their kids get that all-important DHA, which is so important for the brain. So, Dr. Dina, can you tell us about omega-3s? Happy to, and like Karen said, we're always happy to come do a workshop with Karen. Uh, my wife and I both grew up in southern Connecticut, so northern New Jersey is about an hour away. So any of you in the tri-state area there, come check it out yes. in the fall. And Karen has all sorts of great events, not just us. Um, but we, we always enjoy our events with you. So yeah, we talked about overcoming nutrient concerns, and we went through some of the basic things. Protein, calcium, iron, omega-3s is a big one. So let's touch on that. A lot of you have heard about omega-3 fats. Very, very important, especially that one you mentioned called DHA. Those of you who like scientific terms, it's docosohexaenoic acid. And otherwise known, we'll just refer to it as DHA. And one of the big concerns with that stuff is that there is not a reliable source of that important omega-3 fat in plant foods. Not land plant foods, some forms of algae contain that stuff. But mostly, for the most part, you don't get this stuff called DHA in plant foods. What you do get in plant foods is another omega-3 fat called ALA. And when the conditions are appropriate, your body can convert ALA into DHA. Unfortunately, the way most people eat, they eat a lot of omega-6s and not enough omega-3s. Even if you get enough omega-3s, but you still eat a lot of omega-6s, that interferes with the body taking ALA, found in fruits and vegetables and flax and chia and hemp seeds. High omega-6 interferes with ALA converting into DHA. And especially for parents, you need to make sure your kids' brains have enough DHA. Low DHA levels are associated with lower IQs, visual problems, more ADHD, and the list goes on from there. Obviously none of us want that for our children. So the good news is, when people eat a diet based on fruits and vegetables, you get both the omega-3 fats in the form of ALA that you need, you get enough omega-6 fats, but you don't get an excessive amount so that ALA can actually turn into DHA in the body. Right. And, and really, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And I brought with me a whole bunch of case histories of people who I've worked with, who I've tested the fatty acid status in the cell membranes in their body to see what's actually there. That's one of the things I do mm -hmm. in my consulting yeah. practice, in addition to all sorts of other lab yes. work. And it's so wonderful that for those who are aspiring to follow a high raw or totally raw vegan lifestyle, that we have people like Dr. Dina who specialize in blood work for people who are living the vegan lifestyle. And so that, you know, I did my blood work and I called Dr. Dina and we discussed it over the phone for like an hour and a half. And so he was able to read my blood work much better than a conventional medical doctor would be able to with a lack of understanding of how I'm living my life, the diet that I'm eating. Mm. Um, now, the like nuts and seeds, like uh, walnuts, I know are high in omega-3. 
But aren't they also high in omega-6? Yeah, I, I forgot if walnuts are either a 7 to 10 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, or excuse me, 7 to 1 or 10 to 1. It's mm -hmm. one of those. So there's significantly more omega-6s compared to omega-3s. The mm -hmm. average person out there eating modern junk food is at eating about a 20 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Ideally, we want to be like 1 to 1, maybe up to four times more omega-6s compared mm -hmm. to omega-3s. So if here's 1 to 1, here's 4 to 1, here's the range we want to be in. Walnuts at 7 to 1 are actually out of the ideal range, but the typical modern diet is even more out of range. So walnuts bring you in the right direction, but I think that's like if it's 120 degrees and you're up in your attic, and you come downstairs and it's 90 degrees, mm. boy, you feel good initially, but 90 is still too hot. Right, right. So walnuts are helpful compared to what most, where most people are coming from, but they're not actually the best source of omega-3s mm -hmm. to stay within a so healthy range. So maybe better range. to go towards chia. Flax, chia, mm -hmm. hemp seeds. And for those of you who are interested in raw food diets, large quantities of fresh fruits and vegetables, especially leafy greens, yeah, as long as you that. eat them, lots of lots yeah. of them, yeah. They can actually supply a significant amount of omega-3 mm -hmm. fats. And purslane, which is That's a wild green, green, also is really abundant. Very high in omega-3s. Mm -hmm. Extremely high. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, so not that I've great. eaten a lot of purslane in my life, but you know, there, it, it, I get it, it whenever it, I can. If you have the opportunity, it's yeah. excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, that's wonderful yeah. information. So this is all information that you can use to create healthy families. Thank and, you, you know, so much. And if I may, may mention something else, uh, number one, yeah, with lab work, I love working with people to help see what's going on with mm -hmm. them. And if there's things to address, I'm here to address them. A lot of times people don't like going to their typical doctor because their doctor scolds them for being a vegan and say, look at all these problems. And I've been a raw vegan for 27 years. I appreciate right. the lifestyle. And I've seen lab work on a lot of raw vegans and a lot of conventional people. And I know what the differences are. So if there's issues to address... You can I'm, tweak it. Yes. And I'm, I'm the friendly version of how to address that. I won't right. scold you. I will say, hey, here's what's going on and here's how we can make it better to help you be healthy within the paradigm that you have chosen, which is extremely healthy if we do it right. Exactly. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that you know DHA is so important for kids, it's also, to back up a little ways, it's incredibly important for pregnant and breastfeeding moms. Definitely. That's when it's so important because the brain, there's a lot of DHA in, the, in your brain cells and in the cells that make up your spinal cord, known as the central nervous system. So when somebody's pregnant and growing a baby, they're growing a new brain and they're growing a new spinal cord, they are supplying the raw materials. So it's well known that there's a major drain upon the DHA reserves of pregnant and breastfeeding women. Yeah. As far as ALA to DHA conversion, babies cannot do that. So they need to have an outside source of DHA mm -hmm. um, until they're at least six months old. And breast milk supplies that. So the thing is though... But our mothers are not eating healthily, not enough. and that's why these babies are really low in DHA. That's correct. So, number one, the baby's low in DHA, and some of the challenges we mentioned earlier happen. And number two, mom's low, because she's been depleted to give it to the baby, and then we've heard of various things, complications of pregnancy, like gestational diabetes, postpartum depression, swelling up with you know excessive amounts of fluid. And a lot of those things can be strongly attributed to lack of DHA. So that's when it is the most, most important, as soon as you get pregnant, or better yet, before, to build up your reserves, and when kids are young and growing and developing. So Dr. Dina, we would love to know your website and where people can learn more about your work. Sure. So our website is rawfoodeducation.com. You know, all one word. Right. And there you can find out about the classes we teach. We have a whole 100-hour curriculum known as the Science of Raw Food Nutrition that we teach at the Living Light Institute in Northern California. We also have, uh, both my wife and I have a YouTube channel where you can learn more information about B12 and us growing food in our own garden and right. various aspects of the raw is food Is that lifestyle. also raw food education? That is. Uh, okay. I may change that one at some point just to my name, Rick Dina, and my wife, Karen Dina, although it's K-A-R-I-N, and then the last name is Dina, D-I-N-A, uh, she's just starting her YouTube channel as well. Great. 
Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.